Okay, from Adrian Lingwood. I'm starting try training tomorrow with a local club, doing cycling and running. Please, any advice, please? It's kind of a general question. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's, I'm glad you're joining a tri club. It's always good to have other triathletes to help you out and teach you. I mean, I'm sure you'll learn a lot from your local tri club. Um, you know, in general, just have fun with it. Um, as you're starting out, you know, you can't get too serious too soon. Um, maybe start with a short triathlon once you're ready to step up and race um, and then move your way up um, potentially to maybe an Ironman someday. But um, best of luck, um, and I hope you, uh, you do well. This one is from Albert Ravello. This, um, what inspires you mentally to keep going even though your body says quit? I get this question a lot. Um, and I mean, for me, there's really no option. Um, I guess in the past, I've raced probably for 12 years now and early in my career, I, I definitely gave up in a race before and I know what it feels like to give up. And I think, you know, pushing through, even though no matter what the pain is in the race, pushing through that pain and getting to the finish line is always going to hurt less than knowing that you gave up. So for me, it's not a question. Um, push through the finish line. You have a bad day, you know, at least you can look yourself in the mirror and know that you did everything possible and, and you can live with that. Uh, this one's from Jacob Cosia. What exercises do you do for the upper body and core? I don't really do many exercises for the upper body. Um, Swimming, I have a halo machine, which is basically sort of a, core, a swim training um, bench with cords. Um, and I do that maybe twice a week uh, just to strengthen those swim muscles. Um, but other than that, I don't do any you know, specific arm, muscle, arm exercises. I don't want my guns to get too big. They're already pretty big as it is. Um, and they're not going to help uh, when you're out there running marathon in in uh, 100 degrees in Kona so try to keep lean as lean as possible um, but it, core exercise definitely suggests doing some core work uh, two to three times a week um, you know anything on your core sit-ups they're boring but there's plenty of plenty of exercise I'm sure you can you can grab from a fitness trainer at your local gym this one's from Caitlin Norden Marinda if you live at sea level how can you train for elevation other than traveling to train uh, you know, I guess, you know, the really only answer for that is to sleep in an altitude tent. Um, if you're, yeah, I mean, that's the only way to prepare for a, a race at, at elevation. Uh, also, coming in late to a race at, at high altitude, I mean, I wouldn't suggest by any means doing a super high altitude race when you train at sea level. Uh, it's just not going to be that enjoyable, but... Um, they say that if you come in sort of late, two days before a, a, a race at um, high elevation and do the race, you tend to fare better than you know coming in like a week before. Generally, a week after being at altitude, you start to feel pretty ordinary. So either right away come in or two weeks in advance come in and do a race. Um, and, you know, sleep in an altitude tent if you own one or if you're fortunate enough to have one at home uh, just laying around. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, you know, I suggest avoiding altitude races. I live at altitude and train at altitude, and I won't race at altitude. I prefer to race at sea level. I think it takes too much out of your body, but each to their own. All right, this question's in from John Kim. He says, your run form is superb. Thanks, John. Did your current run form require much tweaking when you first started training for Ironman? Do you have any suggestions on how to improve running economy? You know, um, going from... Olympic to 70.3 to Ironman was a progression for me. Um, I didn't, you know, come into the sport and expect to be a great runner right away. I didn't expect to be a great marathoner right away. So for me, it's been a work in progress. Um, I can't really pinpoint a session or um, any particular sort of training that enabled me to, you know, run the way I do. I think it's just been consistency um, from all the years of running and, and also being injury free. I think that's helped a lot. Um, you know, having trained for 10 years doing the sport, not really had to take a day off for injury. Uh, I think all of those reasons helped me become the runner that I am today and the and other reasons why I can run well in Kona. I think being small also um, helps in Kona with the heat. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't really have one particular session or, or, or reason that um, I've become 
a, a good runner in, in Ironman racing. So I'm not sure I answered your question there, but um, consistency, I guess. Simon Friend, any advice for preparation for a preparation for Kona coming from Southern Australia where it's still cold early September and only having eight days in Kona to get used to the heat? Um, you know, training for a hot race, there's a lot of things you can do. Um, you know, go down into your basement or whatever, seal off the room, uh, make it hot in there if you can. Um, trainer sessions, uh, treadmill sessions, wear a long sleeve shirt, wear, you know, your tights, wear a hat, um, uh, a beanie as we call in Oz. Um, I think, you know, those are the things that you can do when you're training in cold weather. Um, you don't need to do it for too long leading into a race. I think it's only, you know, a couple of weeks leading into. Um, and in fact, you know, I think the ideal time coming into Kona is 10 days out. I think you can adjust pretty quickly. Um, coming from Australia as well, I mean, I know it's cold in September, but your body remembers, you know, it's warm in summer there. And um, I think your body can switch over pretty quick. Uh, I go into Kona two weeks early. Um, they say it takes 10 days to adjust to the heat. And um, that's worked really well for me. But obviously, I'm coming from summer as well. So, you know, just train in the heat as much as possible, as in, you know, simulated heat. Um, so basement, um, lots of clothes, um, and sweat it out. Um, this one's from Matt Wilson. With all the professional commitments you have as a triathlete, spokesperson, and role model, what would the one thing you do more of if you had more free time? The question goes on a little bit. So these days, time never seems free. There's always an opportunity, the opportunity cost of what you should be doing. I don't know if that makes sense. Um, yeah, I mean, if I had more time, I'd spend it with family and spend it with friends more. Um, I think, you know, being a professional athlete, you're right. You know, there are a lot of commitments. Um, and just being a professional athlete in, in itself takes a lot of energy and a lot of time. And I find myself wanting to go out and visit friends and promising that I'll go out and visit friends that go out to dinner. And, you know, at the end of the day, you can't get off the couch sometimes. So, um, yeah, I mean, I'd just spend more time with friends and family if I, if I had the extra time. That's about it. This one's from, I might butcher this last name, Brian Grabowski. <laughs> uh, does your felt DA fit in your carry-on bag? Just about. Um, I wish it did, actually. It would make life a lot easier. But um, no, I'm in a standard bike case. It's super heavy and I get a million questions as to if there's a dead body or anything in that in that suitcase all the time so yeah i lug that thing around i've been lugging that thing around for the last 10 years so it's no unfortunately no carry on for my little felt da this one's from mike uh celentano what kind of brick workouts do you do in order to pull a 252 run leg in kona um good question <laughs> you know i I do a one key brick session, you know, it was well documented. It was in Crowey's uh, training day on triathlete. Um, one brick session that's about eight weeks out, and that's one of my key sessions leading into Kona. I don't do that session year round. It's a session that I'll only do once I'm fit enough to handle it. Uh, and that's five hour ride, the last hour as hard as I can go, and then 10 one milers off the bike. So that's a, that's a tough session, um, but it's a good key session. Um, and then another session I do sort of four weeks out is similar sort of bike and then maybe 40 minutes at um, 70.3 race pace off the bike. So those sort of runs throughout the year, for the most part, I run off the bike easy, but I'm consistent in that, you know, I do those runs off the bike more than once a week, twice a week, three times a week. A lot of the time when I hop off the bike, I know, you know, you want to sit on the couch and maybe I will sit on the couch and have a chocolate milk, but then, then I'll go out and get my run done. Um, it's important to just keep reminding your body that it's not finished after the bike and that you do still have to run and I think it eventually becomes second nature after doing the sport for so long running off the bike you know on an ideal day not always but sometimes it feels like I'm just warmed up from the bike and 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 I'm ready to go so I don't know if I'd run a whole lot faster in a fresh half marathon or marathon next one's from Ben Ivanowski what is the greatest fuel for your overwhelming competitive desire the greatest fuel uh, I guess just for me, it's about trying to see how good I can become or uh, how fast I can go and how fast I can go in Kona more specifically. Um, that's what drives me every year. I want to get back there. I want to test myself. I want to push my own limits. I mean, I'm constantly surprised. I mean, I never thought I'd be running 252 off the bike in Kona. 
um, and I've done it, and now I, I want more. Uh, so I think maybe I'm just greedy, um, always wanting to improve on the uh, last year's performance, and that's enough fuel for me. Next one's from Brittany Jean. How do you keep focused for the entire 140.6 miles? Do you feel that being mentally prepared is more than more important than being physically prepared? You know, mental preparation for an Ironman is huge. Uh, you're right. You know, you're out there for hopefully less than nine hours, uh, depending on the day or depending on the course, I should say. Um, so mental preparation is really important. I mean, I, I don't think I'm focused for the full 140.6, but I'm certainly, you know, not far off it. You know, we train every day. You go out there, you're working hard. You get used to being in that comfortably uncomfortable state. Um, and I mean, you know, for the most part, especially in Kona, it goes by really quickly. So I guess, you know, for the most part, you are kind of focused. You, there's so many things to think about. Fueling adequately, making sure, listening to your stomach, uh, reading the signs as to whether you're, um, you're having too much carbohydrate, you need salt, uh, if you're having enough electrolyte, if you're having enough water. So there's a lot of things to think about throughout the race. And that's just um, thinking about yourself. You're also competing against you know, other competitors, so where they are in the race, uh, how far down or how, how far you're ahead of your competition. Uh, there's a lot of things to think about. Uh, so I guess it's not super hard to be focused, uh, but, you know, I think it's it's still a long way, so your mind may, may wander a little bit, but um, just got to remember to sort of bring it back to what you're doing and why you're there and um, try and just stay positive throughout the race.